In the last video, I talked about um, uniform continuity and the concept of uniform continuity for uh, real valued functions. So, functions which uh, take a subset of the real numbers onto uh, a codomain of the real numbers. And I said that if f is continuous, continuous on an interval ab, then f is uniformly continuous on AB. And this is an important theorem uh, for a variety of different reasons, but it's especially useful when we're dealing with um, integrals, uh, which is what we're going to be dealing, it, uh, dealing with a lot in, in this uh, series of videos, especially because the whole sort of notion of work done is ultimately defined by what's called a, a line integral. So we need to get some preliminary concepts like this out of the way. But before we try to prove this theorem, actually this might be a two or three part video as well because there are a few prelim preliminary uh, things we need to cover before actually proving that um, a function that is continuous on a closed interval is uniformly continuous on the same interval. Uh, the first thing we should cover is something called uh, the nested the nested interval theorem. And the idea of this theorem is if you have a line like this and you create a bunch of closed intervals. So this is one closed interval with the rule being that the next closed interval that you create has to be a, uh, let's say for, for the purpose of this demonstration, a proper subset of the previous interval you've already drawn. So my second interval is a proper subset of this interval. And let's say I keep creating these proper subsets. Um, and I do this at infimum, so I do this to infinity. Uh, a question that one person, someone may ask is, in the space between all these intervals, um, does there exist a point, i.e. a number? And it, it kind of seems like it, but let's formalize everything we're doing. So the actual theorem is if we have a sequence i n uh, of nested intervals, which just means that um, i0, everything everything's a subset of the interval we draw before. OK. Then the intersection, so the space that's contained um, within all the intervals, uh, there's a point, there's at least one point in that, in that space. Whoops. So it's not empty. Okay, that's the theorem. Now, uh, I'll quickly present a proof of this theorem, and it uses the least upper bound property of the real numbers. So let's say our interval sequence is a sub n b sub n, uh, where n is larger or equal to zero, okay, and there's also a natural number. Okay, um, one thing we notice is that a, um, whoops, a i is always going to be less than or equal to a sub i plus one, and b sub i is always going to be less than or equal to 
um, sorry, b sub i plus 1 is always going to be less than or equal to b sub i. Uh, the reason these two things are true is because um, the next interval we draw has to be a subset of the previous interval. So we can't have things like b sub i plus 1 being greater than b sub i or a sub i being greater than a sub i plus 1 because then we don't we don't fulfill that condition. Okay, so let's continue. So essentially we have this sort of sequence for a's. It's uh, increasing. And for b's we have uh, this sequence which is decreasing. Another interesting thing that we can say about the, the sequence of nested intervals is that a sub i is never greater than a sub j, oh whoops, than b sub j for any i j. This is impossible. You can't have a greater than any b. Uh, the reason why is, well, let's say this is true for some i and j. Uh, let's say, well, case one, uh, i is equal to j, which means a sub i is greater than b sub i. That's clearly a contradiction because, remember, our interval is a sub i, b sub i, so a sub i by definition is less than or equal to b sub i. Then we have another case to consider. Let's say i is less than j. What happens if a sub i is greater than b sub j in this case? Well, if i is less than j, then a sub i is less than or equal to b sub i, right? But remember, b is a descending sequence, so b sub i is uh, less than or equal to um, the previous term, right? Which is less than or equal to the previous previous term, and eventually we'll reach b sub j because j is uh, greater than i. So there's our contradiction, and similarly we can prove it for when i is greater than j. So this is impossible in any case. Okay. Which means that our sequence of left endpoints of our intervals, a sub n, is uh, it's, all, it's monotonic, increasing, and bounded above. So we can apply the least upper bound property of the real numbers now. So therefore, the supremum of the sequence a sub n exists. Okay, now all we have to do now is show that the supremum of, oops, of, of, uh, of a sub n is actually also um, less than or equal to b i for all i. Well, let's try this by contradiction. Let's suppose that the supremum of a sub n is actually greater than bi for some for uh, for some bi. Okay. Well, there is an interesting property that the supremum has which prohibits this, and that is uh, we can find um, an a k that is arbitrarily close to the supermen of this sequence. So why can we find that? Okay, well let, let's say let's say there doesn't exist any a uh, ai such that um, the supermen of this left endpoint sequence, the difference between that supermen and ai is uh, less than epsilon, where epsilon is just some real number. Well, what that means is AI is actually um, greater than the supremum uh, of AN minus epsilon. Uh, oh, sorry. 
made a sh made a s mistake there. So if there doesn't exist an AI such that this is true, then for all AI, the supremum of this set minus AI is larger or equal to epsilon, which means that AI is actually less than or equal to the supremum of AN minus epsilon for all I. But that's a contradiction because then this over here is an upper bound of our sequence. Whereas we just said that this is the least upper bound of our sequence by definition of the supermoon. So we reach a contradiction. So there does have to be an AI where that's true for any epsilon. We didn't specify what epsilon was, just an arbitrary number. In which case, we can let our epsilon be supermum an minus bi. So in other words, there's some a k where um, the supermum minus a k is less than the supermum minus bi, which means that a k is greater than bi. Earlier we proved that this is impossible which refutes our hypothesis over here, which means that this must be true. So that means that this supermum is less than or equal to bi for all i, and by definition is greater or equal to ai for all i. So we found something that is in every single uh, nested interval. I've gone from writing, uh, by the way, I've, I've gone from writing supermum of our sequence to to just supermum, just as short. So that's the nested interval theorem. Okay, I have about four more minutes, so let's see if I can fit something else in. Okay, um, maybe I'll give some, I'll give you some intuition for the next part of this video. Um, we will now discuss the idea of um, the continuity. of a function, but we're going to relate this to sequences. So we all know that a function that's continuous looks, you know, it has no, has no breaks. So it's like one uh, smooth piece. And we notice that, let's say this is some value over here. If we take a sequence of points that uh, over time gets closer, and closer to this value, let's call it a, and we keep evaluating the value of the function at each of these points in the sequence, we notice that the function should be tending to its value at a, where a is the uh, number the sequence in question converges to. And it turns out that this will always occur when f is uh, continuous. And you can kind of see that sort of sort of graphically. So this is what we'll talk about in, in the next video. Thanks for watching.